If you are a self-employed individual or you're a PAYE earner who earns more than 5,000 euro in additional income, you'll need to file a Form 11 to declare this income. And today we're going to be running through how to file a Form 11. And for those of you who've been following along with the channel, we know we've done quite a few videos on taxation and understand that's not always the most glamorous side of investing, but it is important. But don't worry, stay tuned. We will be releasing other videos on different topics very soon. And in addition, Revenue don't exactly make this clear on their website how to do your taxes, especially when it comes to investing, hence why we're doing these videos to begin with. But if Revenue do update their processes, we will update our videos to reflect this. And as always, if there's a particular section that you're actually interested in, you can use the timestamps below to jump to that section. And otherwise, let's get it. But before we dive in, it's important to note that not everyone will have to file a Form 11. There are three main forms you need to know of when investing in Ireland, and they are a CG1 form, a Form 12, and a Form 11. We have videos on each of these forms, including this video, and we'll link them in the description and up here. If you already understand which form is suitable for you, you can skip to the next section as we're briefly going to describe which is which. If you have greater than 5,000 euro in non-PAYE income, you'll need to file a Form 11. If you have less than 5,000 euro in non-PAYE income, you need to file a Form 12. If you are only declaring gains or losses on your stock or crypto investments and you have no additional income outside of your PAYE job, then you need to file a CG1 form. So the good news about the Form 11 is that it contains everything. You won't need to file a Form 12 or a CG1 form because the Form 11 contains all of that information within it. The bad news is it's a long form. If you fall under the Form 12 category, you have two options. You can either e-file it or paper file it. If you take the e-filing route, you can simply log into your My Account page on revenue.ie and submit it through there. The downside with going through the e-filing route is that it does not contain, at least at the time of recording, a capital gains tax section. So if you e-file your Form 12, you will still also need to do a CG1 form and post that directly to Revenue. On the other hand, if you paper file your Form 12 and send that directly to Revenue, the paper form does actually include a capital gains tax section, so you won't need to do a CG1 form if you paper file your form 12. We wish revenue didn't make this as confusing as it is, but so be it. When it comes to investment taxes, it is really important to distinguish between what is income and what is a capital gain or a capital loss. When we talk about income, we're talking about things like dividends, crypto staking rewards, income from a side hustle, all those kind of things. Whereas when we talk about capital gains, we're basically talking about the increase or decrease in the value of an asset and the subsequent sale. So for example, if you buy a Coca-Cola share for $100, and then subsequently sell it for $150, you will have made a capital gain of $50 on that Coca-Cola share. But let's say with this Coca-Cola share, you get a $10 dividend. This will be classified as income and will be charged at your marginal tax rate. With Form 11, there are separate sections for both of these, and we'll be running through that shortly. And just to stress, the majority of PYE workers will not need to fill out a Form 11. So please make sure before watching this whole Form 11 video, you understand which category you fit into. Okay, so on to filling out the Form 11. And just to emphasize at the start, the Form 11 is quite a big form. There are a lot of different sections and not all of them will be relevant. So we're gonna go through the most relevant ones, but please let us know in the comments if there are any sections that you are interested in that we haven't covered. So before you even start filling out the Form 11, you are gonna to need to have an account on Ross. It is important to clarify though, that just because you have an account on revenue.ie doesn't necessarily mean you're registered for Ross as that is a separate process. So do keep that in mind before diving in. So registering for ROS is a pretty straightforward process. Simply go onto revenue.ie, sign into your My Account page, scroll down all the way to register for ROS, click. On this screen, you'll have your details if they're already uploaded onto My Account, and if not, you can add them yourself. Decide whether you wanna receive your system password via text or email. For me, I'm gonna opt in for email. Then simply check your email for the code that you receive and come back here to add it into the password system. Scroll through all these terms and conditions, accept them if you're happy with them. For this, you can download and save your digital certificate. Personally, I'm applying it as an individual, but of course, if yours is any way different, feel free to click that option. Choose CGT as your option. Add in your tax registration number, for most people, this is going to be your PPS number. Click next. And then here, when you download and save your digital certificate, you'll just be asked for the system password that you should have received by email or text. Proceed through the following steps. 
and that will complete the process. Okay, so once you've completed the registration for Ross, you probably are usually used to this screen, the revenue.ie screen, and you usually sign into my account. But for the sake of the Form 11, we actually want to sign into Ross, so you can click through here. So when you get to the Ross homepage screen, you can just log in. And to complete the Form 11, we simply click complete a form online, select the tax type, which is income tax, the form is Form 11 and we can file a return. So I've already started my Form 11, so the options may look slightly different here, but if you are just starting for the first time, you can hit New and you'll be given an option to either do it from scratch or to select a pre-populated form. I'd recommend selecting a pre-populated form because Revenue will bring in details that they have on their website and it'll save you filling out some of the personal details and, and some other sections. You'll also have to choose the tax year. So this is for the year 2020 at the time of recording, but make sure to click the relevant year for you and the tax return that you want to do it for. So in a lot of cases, you will be doing the tax year prior to the current year. So for example, it's 2021 now and I'll be filling out 2020's tax return. So just something to be aware of. But if you've already started, you can hit edit same as me here. And so this is the beginning of the form. Just throughout the form, there are a few things to call out. So you'll notice in a lot of sections that you'll see an asterisk. So the asterisks basically indicate which areas of the form are mandatory to fill out. So you won't be able to progress unless you fill them out, similar to most forms. Another thing to note is the orange help section button here. And this will be on top of every page. So it usually provides extra context to some of the areas in the form or the section of the form. Feel free to use this as you're going through the form and if you are unclear on any of the terminology. There's also a really helpful guide from Revenue, which we'll link in the description. It goes into further detail on all the sections and it's a nice reference point as well as this video. One thing to note as well is that it's a pretty long form. You see there's a lot of sections here. But as you go through, you'll be able to save as you go and then return to the form. So it's important to save as you go, just so you have all your work saved and you can return to it another day if you need to. In this case, I'll be using a pre-populated form. So some of my details will already be included. This will bring in details from revenue directly, as well as bringing in figures from the previous year's tax return. Make sure to change these details where applicable if you are bringing in the previous year's numbers. So the first section is the personal details section. For this section and all the sections in general, I'll probably blur out a lot of my own details, but I'll run through them all the same. So the first section is a bit morbid in personal details. It's deceased individual. So presuming you haven't died and aren't doing this from beyond the grave as a ghost, you can probably just skip past this section. If you are a ghost doing this from beyond the grave, please leave a comment in our comments as we'd love to hear your story. The next section here, you just make sure they're correct, your address and your primary trade. If you have any changes, you can notify revenue through uh, my inquiries. So the first section that you'll need to indicate is your civil status. So just make sure to check that this is correct. It may have changed during the year if you got married or divorced or whatever it is. Um, so just ensure that that's correct and change if appropriate. If your status has changed, you may lose some of your pre-populated numbers. So just be aware of that. If you need to change it, maybe take note of the figures so you have them as a reference point. Then just make sure your date of birth is correct. This will be important for certain things like uh, pension age reliefs, uh, for example. So just ensure that's correct. It should be there based on um, revenues information. So then you can hit continue. So once you've confirmed all that, it actually reopens the personal details section again. So there'll actually be different questions here, but you do just need to confirm all the information at the start before you move on with the form. So for personal details, um, there are a few boxes which you can take here if you, they're relevant to you. Uh, I won't go through them right now. In section A, what you do need to confirm though is your residency, your ordinary residency and your domicile. The definitions are actually just below these and in the interest of time, we'll leave a link in the description for you to look at. There are plenty more details on Revenue's website. In my case, I am resident, ordinarily resident and domiciled in Ireland, but just make sure that you know which one of these you are as it'll have different implications for your taxes. At the end here, you also have to add your nationality. So I am Irish and I have hit Ireland. Section B is for non-resident individuals. Uh, I won't go into too much detail here, but you know you can input your country that you are resident in, tax identification numbers. And again, this will have implications on your tax due. Finally, one last section to call out in the personal details tab is the expression of doubt section. This is at the bottom of the personal details section. And if you have an area that you're unsure of the tax application, you can insert it here. Why would you make an expression of doubt? Well, according to Revenue, where a taxpayer makes a genuine expression of doubt and it is subsequently found that the view taken by the taxpayer was incorrect, 
the taxpayer will nevertheless be regarded as having made a full and true disclosure. This means that any additional tax due because of the correction of the error will be due and payable within one month of the date on which the assessment is amended. And basically what this means, it will safeguard you from paying extra interest if you have applied it in the wrong way. It does have to be a genuine expression of doubt though, please make sure to check the revenue website for more details on this. Once you've completed personal details, you can hit continue. For this video, we'll be going through all the sections in detail, but for you, you can skip to the sections that are relevant for you and the ones you want to learn on. We have included timestamps in the description, so feel free to use them. My form looks slightly different now because I have already started it, but um, you'll see white and yellow ticks across certain sections. If you see yellow ticks, these are sections that basically will have to be visited and they need to be completed. So this could be based on information you've given to revenue and they know that you have to fill out this section. Once the section has been complete, the tick will turn white. So that's just a bit of context on what these ticks are referring to. So now let's start with self-employed income. This is where you can enter your self-employed income or for example, income that you have outside of your PAYE job. Some examples of self-employed income that you could have outside of your PAYE job could be providing video editing services, selling t-shirts online, or letting out your property on Airbnb for short-term leases, for example. You can enter each trade separately on the Form 11. So for example, if you have two side incomes, you can enter one and then hit next trade and add for trade two. Just note that trade one uh, should be your main side hustle income source. Um, so for example, this can be the side hustle that brings in the most revenue. So to start entering the self income, you can add a description of the trade or profession. So for example, video editing, and then you also have to complete this uh, selection here. So in this case for video editing, the operations do not relate to construction, forestry or meat processing. So I'm gonna hit no here, but make sure to check in your circumstance what's relevant. So for the profit assessable in 2020, this is the actual number that you'll be taxed on. There are separate boxes for a profit or loss and you can't enter into both boxes. If you make a profit, you enter it in this box, whereas if you make a loss, you enter it into this box. If you made a profit, you basically enter the same number from this box in here. Whereas if you made a loss, you would actually only put zero in here as you have no profit and should not be taxed on it. If you have had any capital allowances in 2020, you can enter them into this section here. This, for example, could include wear and tear. You can also claim relief for losses in the year. Basically, you enter your losses in the box above and then when you hit calculate, revenue will calculate how much you can claim for the year. Losses from prior years can also be used. So this is basically only applicable if you've not already used the loss in a previous year. You must complete the extracts from accounts section, which is something that you'll probably need to prepare outside of this form. To start, you would enter the start and end date. Um, if this is just a whole year, just put it in the 1st of Jan and the 31st of December. If we scroll down, you'll have to enter a number in all of these boxes, basically that have a, a star beside the description. If something's not applicable to you, like for example, if you have no subcontractors, you still have to put like a zero into this box. Once you have all these numbers in, you can hit calculate and it will basically bring you to your total profit, net profit um, for the accounts. Then there might be some adjustments that you have to make on your net profit. You can hit calculate again, and then that will bring in the adjusted net profit into these two uh, areas. So that will be based on the figures that you have input. This figure is basically the same as the one that we will be taxed on above. So make sure that whatever calculation you have here equals what you have entered above. Finally, the last sections are drawings. So if you took any money out of the business, um, what your cash and bank balance is, and if you have any uh, bank loans or overdrafts, again, if none of this is applicable, you put zero in. You can also add any additional information here. Uh, once that's complete, if you have another trade to do, you can hit next trade or else you can hit save. Next section is Irish rental income. So this is income that comes from rental properties in Ireland. If you have foreign rental income, we'll be covering that in a future section. Also important to note that this is different to Airbnb income. This would be long-term rental income. So this is where you input it. And also another thing to note is that if you are availing of the rent or room relief, you will not input it here. There'll be a section in the future, which we will cover. And this will actually be included in exempt income. So I'll cover that shortly. So again, just to clarify, if you are registered as a landlord with the RTB, this is where you can put in your rental income. It is split into two different sections. So the first is residential property, and then there's also commercial property. Both sections are fairly similar. I'll just cover residential property for now. 
to start, you can just put in the number of properties let, one, two, three, whatever it is, and then you can include the gross rent receivable. You can also add any expenses that happened throughout the year. So this could include repairs, any allowable interest that you may have, um, and these will all be deducted from your gross rent receivable. When you have all of those details in, you can hit calculate, and then you'll have the amount of chargeable income after expenses, and this is the number that you'll be taxed on. This is quite similar for a commercial property, so just input the relevant details and then hit calculate if you have a commercial property. When you have hit calculate here, if you have uh, no commercial property, it will just take the number from residential property, vice versa, if you just have commercial property and no residential property, it will take the commercial property number. If you have both, it will add them. So this will be the total amount of rent that you have before capital allowances and losses. Make sure to add any capital allowances or losses that you have as well in this section. For capital allowances, this is basically a wear and tear or depreciation, and it's allowed at 12.5% per year on furnitures or fittings. You can also bring forward losses from previous years if you have any. One thing to note is that the capital allowance figure cannot exceed the rent figure. So for example, if you have 1,000 euro of capital allowances and 500 euro in rent, you can only claim 500 euro in capital allowances for that year. If you want further details on how rental income works in Ireland, we have a video on this, so you can check it out. And uh, we've linked it in the top right hand corner now. The next section is PAYE, BIK and pensions number one. So the PAYE panel is divided into two sections, PAYE 1, and you enter all of your income here that was subject to PAYE. This section should probably already be populated by revenue from submissions from your employer, but if not, please contact your employer to ensure this information has been passed on. The only thing you might need to do is clarify the source of income, which is located here, and it may not already be pre-selected for you. If you have more than one employment, you can also add one here, but again, this is, should probably already be provided by that employer. And just remember, if you have a PAYE job, you are entitled to the employee tax credit. So make sure to claim that in the section later on this form, which we will also cover. So the second section on PAYE BIC and pensions is for any taxable social welfare pensions, any benefits received or any PAYE income that was not subject to PAYE, for example, diplomat earnings. It is also relevant for certain reliefs that are not attachable to one income. The majority of this section should be pre-populated, so we won't dwell too long on it in the interest of getting on with the video. But if something is missing, again, double check with your employer and ask them to share the details. One area to draw your attention to here is the pension relief section. This is relevant as long as it hasn't been deducted by your employer. So for example, if you have an additional voluntary contribution on your pension, you can usually add that here to calculate your pension relief. You basically need to hit this pension relief button and add the details. Uh, we won't go into detail now, but that is available here. Um, this is also separate from whether you have a PRSA. That will be in a later section, which we will cover. The next section, which will be relevant for a lot of our viewers, is foreign income. In general, individuals who are resident in Ireland are taxable on their worldwide income. The question as to whether you are entitled to a credit or deduction for any foreign tax deducted or whether foreign tax should be refunded by a foreign state depends on whether Ireland has a double taxation agreement with the foreign state and is also dependent upon the terms of that agreement. There is a list of countries which Ireland currently has a double taxation agreement. It's available on Revenue's website and we'll link it in the description. A few sections that may be relevant for some of our viewers are dividends from Canada, Great Britain, Northern Ireland, US, could be foreign rents. And so we'll go into details on a few of them now. And just to clarify as well, if you have Irish dividends, uh, you do not put them here as they're a separate section for Irish other income, which will have Irish dividends in there. So this is just for foreign income right now. So to start, let's look at some of the dividends. Two important definitions to start are the dividend withholding tax and the encashment tax. For the dividend withholding tax, Irish resident companies must withhold tax on dividend payments and other distributions that they make. There are some exceptions to this. They must withhold dividend withholding tax at 25% for the year in which the distribution is made. The other definition that's important is encashment tax. And this is a withholding tax also, deducted from income from public revenue dividends and dividends of a non-resident body, i.e. not Irish companies. The individual who is responsible for the payment of income must deduct the tax. This is also at 25%. So this is the section that you can include dividends from non-Irish companies, but it depends on where the company is based as to where you would input on the form. So for example, if you're inputting dividends from the UK or Northern Ireland, you would put it here. But then if we scroll down, 
when you have uh, US dividends, you can input them here. There are important differences here between the countries. So for the UK, you pay Irish tax on the net dividend received by you. There is no credit allowed for any UK tax already deducted from the dividend payment. You should also convert the net payment received to euro. However, for US and Canadian dividends, you enter the gross amount and the tax relief will be applied at the end of the income tax return. You can just put the total of all your dividends into these sections. So for example, if you have dividends from Coca-Cola and you have dividends from Tesla, just add the gross amount and include it here. You are liable to tax on the gross dividend at the marginal rate of tax. So depending on your personal circumstances, you'll pay income tax at the marginal rate. For example, if you're taxed at 40%, you would have to pay the additional 15% for income tax, as well as USC and PRSI on this. So one obvious question is where do I put dividends from countries outside of these? So you can put it in the other foreign income section. Best place to put it is here, an income from all other foreign non-deposit interest royalties, annuities, dividends. Um, and again, you put the gross amount in here. Make sure to check the double taxation agreement list and see uh, if the country that you're receiving the dividend from has a double taxation agreement with Ireland. And this will explain to you what amount of tax you will pay on these dividends. The foreign jurisdiction may um, withhold tax on payment of a dividend. And again, where there is a double taxation agreement, you might get some relief on this payment. So important to understand whether it has a double taxation agreement or not. So one important area for you to fill in this section is Irish tax deducted on encashment. This is basically for when tax has been deducted from foreign dividends at source, i.e. in your broker. You can enter the amount of Irish tax deducted on encashment from US dividends, Canadian dividends and other foreign dividends in this line. It will basically be used as a relief on your overall tax bill and ensure that you don't pay double tax on the same dividend. One other section that may be relevant to you is foreign rents. So if you have a property or properties in a foreign country, you can input it here. One thing that's important to note is that uh, foreign properties will be separate to Irish properties. So for example, if you have a loss on a foreign property, you can only apply it to the foreign property income. You cannot apply it to any Irish rental income. If there are any other sections here that you are unclear of, uh, please let us know in the comments and we'll be happy to clarify that. The next section is Irish other income. Um, so what might be relevant for you here potentially is Irish deposit interest. So for example, if you have a savings account, um, you can enter um, the amount of interest that you received here and then indicate whether or not dirt was received. The second section that would be relevant potentially to our viewer is the Irish dividend section. As we mentioned before, Irish dividends are subject to a dividend withholding tax. So basically you would have to input the gross amount into either of these two sections, depending on whether the withholding tax was deducted or not. The total amount of tax due will be calculated at the end of the form. And again, it's at your marginal rate of tax and also USC and PRSI. The next section is exempt income. And this is where you can fill out any other sources of income that are exempt from tax. So two potential areas that you may be invested in, for example, are profits or gains from woodlands. So uh, you may have an investment from woodlands. This is not subject to tax, so you can input that here. So the second area of interest would be the rent a room relief scheme. We touched upon this in our rental income video, so please be sure to check that out so you understand it. But basically you can earn 14,000 euro tax-free annually if you rent a room in your principal primary residence. Won't go into too much detail as you can check out the rental video, but uh, you can enter the total or gross amount of income here that you wish to avail relief on. The next section is the charges and deductions section. Again, there are plenty of potential options here that could be filled out. The one that may affect the majority of our viewers is pension contributions for PRSAs and RSCs. For example, contributions paid into a PRSA will benefit from tax relief at an individual's highest income tax rate. It's very important that you enter your date of birth at the start of the form so you get the appropriate amount of relief on these pension contributions. This relief is basically restricted to a percentage of your earnings. For example, I am under 30, so my relief is restricted restricted to 15% of my total earnings up to a maximum of 115,000 euro. It's important to note that this is across all of your pension contributions. So if you have a pension with your employer and a PRSA, you'll be maxed at this percentage across both. Once you have completed all this section, you can hit calculate and then revenue will show you the total amount of relief that you are due. We of course have a video which runs through pensions in Ireland and the benefits, which we have linked in the top right hand corner. So you can check it out if you want to find out more. The next section is personal tax credits. This is quite important as you can basically claim back 
tax from the government. So there are a lot of uh, tax credits here, as you can see. Uh, I won't be going through all of them, but I'll go through some of the main ones. So everyone should at least get two tax credits. And this would be the personal tax credit, which you can see here, as well as either the employee tax credit or the earned income credit. So employee tax credit is basically for PAYE workers, and this is 1,650 euro. And the earned income tax credit is also 1,650 euro, and this is basically for self-employed individuals. If you have a PAYE job and you have a side hustle, you have earned income basically, you can only claim a maximum of 1,650 euro between the two. So basically, you can't double up on these if you have both earned income as well as employee income. Basically, you get a max of 1,650 euro if you have both a job and a side hustle. Some other ones that may be of interest to you are the medical insurance relief, other health expenses over here, the stay and spend tax credit if you um, went on holidays during the pandemic, either in 2020 or 2021. For the restriction of relief section, this is relevant for high income individuals. If this is you, congratulations. But for the majority of viewers, I think we're gonna skip this for now and hopefully we can return another day. So once you've completed all the sections above, you can hit uh, calculate over here. This will give you a summary of all the information that you have put in and calculate basically the amount of tax that you owe or are owed by revenue. So if we scroll down to the bottom of the form, we'll see here basically you'll either have total liability or revenue will owe you some money. You can see here total amount payable, but if you're owed money, it'll show you that you're owed money. So you can continue then from this screen. The next section is capital gains. Um, some of you may have skipped straight to this section. And um, this is where we conclude all of our gains on, you know, shares that we may have sold or property, for example. And um, for a lot of our viewers, it may be capital gains on shares. We have a very detailed video on both capital gains tax in Ireland and how to fill out a CG1 form. A lot of the sections are the same. So please make sure to check out our video on how to fill out a CG1 form, as I'll explain in detail how to fill out this area of the form. The next section is chargeable assets. So in this section, you can enter the number of chargeable assets that were acquired in the year. There's a definition of chargeable assets on the revenue website, which you can check out. So basically you can enter the um, total amount that you paid for the asset in, in the relevant sections here. So depending on what the asset was, there isn't much detail um, on revenue's website as to why you have to fill this out. From our research, it seems to just give a record to revenue um, of what assets you've acquired and help revenue understand if you want to make a capital gains tax claim in the future. So feel free to fill this out in your own time. The next section is capital acquisitions. So this is where you can declare whether you've received a gift or inheritance in the year. Basically, if you have a capital acquisition, you have to tick this box here. There is no section in this form to fill out the details of it, and you'll actually just have to complete a capital acquisitions tax return called a form IT38. There are a whole bunch of rules when it comes to capital acquisitions and the tax liability. We are not gonna go into detail on the capital acquisitions tax in this video. If you are interested in learning more, please let us know in the comments. But for the purposes of this video, we will not be going into this. The next section here is uh, property-based incentives. Uh, this is quite niche, so I will not be going into detail on it right now. So I'm gonna to go to the next section. So this is one of the most important parts of the form. It's the income tax self-assessment. You'll need to complete this before you sign and submit the form. And just note that this is just for income tax. There's a separate section for CGT, which is next. There are two columns, column A, which is the revenue calculation of the tax owed, and column B, which is the self-assessment. Column A will have numbers populated based on how we filled out the form already. If you want more details on this, you can go back to the calculate section, which runs through in detail how these numbers were calculated. To make your self-assessment, however, you'll need to complete column B. If you don't put numbers into column B, you will not be able to complete the form. If you do agree with revenues numbers, you can actually scroll down and click that you agree that the figures are correct in this box here. And then if you want to add the values from revenues assessment to your self-assessment, you can click here and revenue will add these numbers. As you can see, numbers have populated in here. One thing to note is that you're only agreeing to revenues figures up to C part two you would only click the disagree with revenue box if you disagree with the amount from 
part A to part C two. There are situations where you could disagree with revenues numbers after C part two. For example, this could happen if you made a tax payment after you um, opened up your pre-populated form. So just be aware of that. For section H, the amount of tax paid directly to the collector in general, it will not transfer over automatically. I have already done it in my form, but if you made any tax payments not included on the form, you can enter it here, otherwise add zero. If you disagree with revenues calculation from A to C part two, you can click no. You do have to give a reason why you disagree and you enter it here. And again, just to reiterate, it's just between uh, section A and C part two. If you do disagree, uh, revenue will probably get back to you and just understand your disagreement. So once we're done there, we can continue. So the next section is the CGT self-assessment. So this is similar to the capital gain section. You just have to confirm a lot of the details uh, and make sure you're okay with that. I won't go into detail now, but just make sure the figures match up with your CGT assessment that you have already completed. The print view is basically just a summary of all the details. Uh, feel free to print or save a PDF for your own record. And finally, when all the details are complete and input, you can sign and submit. Once you sign and submit, you'll basically get the option to uh, confirm the amount of income tax balancing. So once you click sign and submit, you get brought to this screen. So you can basically either pay now or you can indicate if you wish to file without uh, making a payment here or if you don't want to complete a statement of net liabilities you can click omit. It's also important to note uh, you can pay preliminary tax for 2021 here and um, so this is just if it's applicable for you you can do so. If not enter zero. You then get brought to the payment screen you just have to fill out your card details and pay the amount due. Uh, if you don't want to pay right now you can just file the return first. Once you've either paid or you have decided to just file the return, uh, you can sign and submit here. So you'll have your PPS number and your password, and then you can hit sign and submit. Okay, so we know that was a lot of information. There are a lot of sections there, but hopefully that helps clear up some of the questions you may have had on Form 11. And of course, if we missed a part or you wanted more detail on something, do let us know in the comments below. We'll be sure to get back to you on those. If you found that video helpful, please make sure to leave it a like and subscribe to our channel. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. Before. <laughs> I'm doing it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First time on this camera. <laughs>